This is my 2023 Mustang Mach 1. Today, I will tell you what I like about this car, what I love about this car, what are my dislikes about this car, and most importantly, if this should be your next Mustang to consider. So this is my 2023 Mustang Mach 1, and it's finished off in the jet fighter gray paint, as you can see. And I really think that this color looks terrific. And I know by now, you probably know the specs, you know, you know about the horsepower, if you're interested about this car, right? You already know about the oil coolers. You know, this car has the coolers from the Shelby GT350. It's got a trans cooler. Uh, it's got oil cooler. I believe this one is the transmission cooler right there. Functional vent, pretty cool. Uh, this is the oil cooler. It has an oil cooler on the back. You already know all of that. Shelby GT350, suspension, Magna Rye. We want to talk about horsepower. The Mach 1 has the Coyote 5.0 from the GT, but it does get a lot of goodies from the Shelby GT350. So you can see right here, we have the Shelby 350 intake manifold. We also have the Shelby GT350 throttle body and the colder intake. Now this increases horsepower from 460 on the regular Mustang GT to 480 horsepower. So you can see also we have a beautiful strut tower. This is to stiffen up front end because this car was intended to go around the track uh, my car does have an upgraded uh, Ford performance air filter and I put a cash can right here to prevent some of that excess oil to spill back into my intake and, and reroute to my uh, valves and, and, and cylinders so there you have it that's the power 480 horsepower 420 pound-feet of torque and uh, yeah very very pleased with this um, powertrain up front this car does not have the handling package wheels we still get the 19 inch uh, size wheels this ones are in the michelin pilot sport 4s great tire really good on rain really good wear and tear they're 255s up front and 275s on the rear versus the handling package which you get 305s up front and 315s on the back so a little bit smaller tires uh, but we still got the same hardware meaning that we have a 15 inch rotor with six piston Brembo brakes and as you can see this ones are finished on the orange which I really do appreciate because it matches with all the orange pinstriping that this car has so as you can see there's an orange theme going with this car all right so moving towards the back see a small spoiler very similar to the one found on the Shelby D350 however I do want to bring your attention to this massive quad tips uh, this ones are 4.5 inches and this were a copy of the Shelby GT500 also this rear diffuser is from the Shelby GT500 we also got oil coolers on the back 373s if you ask for the rear end and that is because this car it is equipped with the Tremec six-speed manual which was a must for me because I love shifting gears and we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, once we go up for a drive but uh, I just love the back end of this car and one of the things that I did to this car was that I put this Tita lowering springs and I really love the stance of this car it really does it really does complement this car very very well as you can see the gap are very I mean, I'm gonna throw a clip so you can see before and after I actually made a video of this I put a car somewhere on the corner and uh, I just love the stance of this car I think that's one of the best mods that you could possibly do to your Mach 1 uh, especially if you don't have the handling package uh, cars I really think that these cars do benefit from that and uh, yeah it's just a little bit lower about one inch in all four corners and uh, it, it, it really makes uh, a big difference uh, I want to show you what this car sounds like be you know besides the intro clip uh, this car does have the active exhaust four modes quiet normal sport and track and it sounds terrific uh, it was uniquely tuned for the Mach 1 
And uh, it's, it's a little bit of a throwback to, they were trying to do like 60s muscle cars. And uh, I think they did a really, really good job. Let's, let's just take a listen. Now that sounds pretty uh, awesome. All right, so let's talk about my ownership experience during the past year. So this is my first year review on this car for one year. What has it been like? That's what I'm gonna tell you right now. All right, so first of all, the experience has been fantastic. Uh, this is indeed my very first Mustang that I've ever owned. That was always a dream of mine. I always wanted to own a new Mustang because Mustangs, Frank, honestly, is my favorite car, so I've always wanted to own one. Uh, not because, per se, you need one, it's just because, you know, I just wanted to have one where I was the first owner, I you know that the car wasn't gonna be mistreated, and, you know, no no accident history, none of that. So, now that we got that out of the way, I have enjoyed tremendously this car. I've been able to make some content with it, uh, even though that's not the main reason why I own this car, it's not to make content, it's because I sincerely enjoy this car and and I, I really like it i've taken it to car shows and a lot of people seem to enjoy this car also i've gotten a ton of compliments on the street of this car and uh, you know even when i was coming to to film this video i had a guy like staring in a white pickup truck staring at this car so yeah this car grabs a lot of attention i guess it all has to do with the jet fighter gray it's not a very common uh, paint job on a Mustang. Obviously, it was only uh, it was only available on the Mark One. It's only been offered on the Mark One, so it's if you see one, chances are that you're looking at a Mark One. Um, so let's talk about the likes first, and then I'll tell you about my dislikes. Uh, so likes, there are many likes about this car. Uh, I really like the S550 lines. I like how this car looks. Uh, I love the, the the Mach 1 package. I think that it, you know, it, it's, it's subtle enough, but it stands out from the uh, ocean sea of Mustangs out there. There's so many Mustangs. So this looks a little bit different uh, with that unique bumper. Um, obviously the color, the striping, the orange print striping, the uh, orange Brembo's, uh, the GT500 rear diffuser. I think it looks terrific. You know, I, I I like the package of this car. Uh, main thing that I love mostly about this car and is the main reason why I got it. And I must report that in the past year that it, it's been flawless. It's this Tremec rev mashing downshift, as you can hear. <laughs> uh, sound like a professional driver, which I'm not. <laughs> And also no lift uh, upshift, so meaning that you could go full throttle and then you could 
never have to remove your your foot from the gas so it allows for very quick shifting Yo. And it sounds terrific also uh, from the back end so yeah i honestly you know ah, let me see all the things that i like about this car i i like that it has oil coolers i really like the brembo brakes that it has uh, i like uh, the active exhaust where it has four modes you can make it quiet you can make it loud uh, I really like the latest Magna ride that they introduced for the S550 where you're able to make the car stiff and actually get rid of a lot of the body roll and, and you do feel that and, uh, and otherwise if you just want to have a, a nice comfortable relaxed cruiser you put this thing in normal mode and don't, then those shocks and struts relax. I, I really like this interior. I know a lot of people give a crap or oh, because it's a Mustang, but honestly, I, I really do enjoy it. I enjoy the orange pinstriping on the seats of the Mach 1. This car indeed is the premium, so you get a lot of nice touch. Like, for example, where your knee will rest, it's all leather, leather wrap, uh, those plastics. So it's, it's very nice and, and soft. There's a lot of like white stitching around this interior. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy it very very much also from this interior i enjoy the digital dash where you're able to customize it with your drive mode and and you see the graphics how they change i think that's pretty cool or you could even keep it traditional and just you know look at traditional most engages uh, i not getting into the rent of the 24 mustangs but i think the integration i've said this before integration of the digital gauges on this car is just perfect because it's it's where the gauge is supposed to be inside that that pod um you know the infotainment isn't the greatest uh, but it works it's eight inches and you know it's not distracting or anything and uh, i just enjoy just the drive driving portion of this car i think this car strikes a nice balance between refine and and also being a little bit raw i think it still has the mustang dna owning it you know in the beginning when i bought this car i was like oh my god this thing is like a bmw so refined and as i've learned to drive this car and i've lived with it lived with it for the past 3,000 miles I realized that there's a lot of Mustang DNA here. Uh, you feel that more through the suspension. Now, the steering is a little bit numb on the S550, that's being an own issue. The Mach 1, it's a little bit better than the GT, but you know, it, uh, it's, it's electronic, so there's no, nothing really connected other than the, the feedback that they're able to give you. I think they did a good job. Now, this is not, you know, Corvette, level type of steering where you feel everything but it, it it responds really well to your commands and overall i think this is the best steering that mustang has ever had to be honest all right so now i don't want to bore you let's talk about my dislikes with this car and they, honestly frankly there are many uh one dislike that i you know that i think with this car uh, is that sometimes I do get rattles on this interior right here on this panel I do hear a rattle from time to time also on the rear quarter panel I do get a rattle uh, now this doesn't right now it's not it's very quiet and I cannot hear anything but you do get some rattles um, occasionally so i mean for sixty thousand dollars i think you know rattles <laughs> you shouldn't have no rattles uh in your mustang interior but at the end of the day this is a four and uh mustang starts around thirty thousand dollars at least for this generation uh this car was around sixty thousand dollars which still is a lot of money for a mustang i mean honestly there there aren't many like dislikes for uh, that i have 
for this car. This is indeed the best car I've ever owned. Uh, besides the rattles, I did have a problem on one of the tail lights when I bought it. Uh, it was a factory problem, but I took I took it to the dealership and they were able to to fix it. Really, nothing major with this car. It has never let me down. Um, going back to the likes, one thing that I really, really appreciate about this car, and I don't think a lot of people talk about it enough, it's just the handling of this thing. This car handles like it's on rails. Like it's unbelievable. I went to the track attack program. I know I've said it a million times if you follow this channel, but I went to the track attack program with Ford and uh, it's this car blew my mind. The, the, what we were able to do at the track, and especially when I went with the instructor to the track, man, this thing is just truly, truly inc an incredible handler. And, and it makes sense, you know, this car was developed to right after the Shelby GT350, and Ford took a lot of the a lot of the learnings from the Shelby GT350 program and that uh, GT500 program and just implemented into the chassis, into this platform. So, all right, guys, there you have it. This is my quick one-year summary of this car. Wish I could tell you more. I mean, there's nothing really has happened to this car. I just tell you what I like. And, and the likes are still there, what I dislike, you know, in a year. I've only put around 3,000 miles on this car, so it's really not a lot of ton of mileage, but this is indeed a weekend car. So I think 3,000 miles per year, it's, it's, it's decent uh, enough. So let me know your thoughts down below. Um, do you have a Mark 1? Do you, uh, are you planning to get a Mark 1? What do you think about the, the Mazda Mark 1 if, if you also own yours for a year or more or a couple of days, months? Um, let me know your comments. Let me know in the comments section down below how, how has the ownership of the Mark 1 treated you? For me, it's been bulletproof, but I knew that because, you know, the Gen 3 Coyote has been proven to be a very reliable uh, motor and, you know, it, it's just, you know, peace of mind, to be honest. Also, the Tramic, that reliable, it's just an awesome, it's very fun, it's very much fun to drive uh, on a weekend or even on a daily uh, occasion. You can put a ton of miles on this car and, and still have a blast. I right, guys, so... Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.